Oh, troglodytes, what have we gotten ourselves into today? All right, this is kind of an alien on this channel. Usually I only deal with Gibsons, but hey, my good buddy, the one that collects 2550s, uh, is putting this on consignment through me. So we have a visitor from 1980. This is a BC Rich guitar before they were, you know, not so good guitars. They call these the Rich Bitch guitars. Uh, B-I-C-H. And this thing is crazy. If you thought the Les Paul artist had options, this thing, this thing has options. Uh, this was a custom ordered one-off guitar for a guy or girl named Dusty Stone. I guess they were a folk artist trying to break into the, you know, hard rock of the era. And I don't know if they were ever successful or not, because I can't find anything on them online, but this is definitely an interesting guitar. So look at all these options. It is absolutely insane. I have went through and deciphered it though. All right, here you have a master volume for both pickups. Uh, down here is just the volume for the neck pickup in case you only want to have your bridge pickup because you're shredding or whatnot. And then here you have your master tone for both the pickups. Now, these three mini toggle switches are your preamps. Well, at least these two are right here, the farthest away. And they're controlled by these two knobs. This basically just decides how much boost you want to have. It makes the guitar really loud. Uh, and then this little mini toggle here is your phase inverter, so you can have the out of phase sound. And then you have coil taps here for each pickup. You have the combination between whichever one you want. And hey, if that's not enough for you, you've got, you know, similar to the L5S, L6S, uh, your five-way variatone switch. So this thing is full of sounds. Unfortunately, I, I have no idea how to play this guitar because I've never even touched a 10-string like this. So this guitar is set up fully as a 10-string guitar. You can see you've got the six normal tuners on the face of the headstock there. Then you've got the uh, four other strings here. And it's your top four strings are kind of like a 12-string guitar, so you can hear it. But then your top two are just normal strings, like a normal electric guitar. So it gives you a bunch of different options to do. And it's just kind of a bizarre guitar that was custom ordered. Uh, next, I mean, it, it weighs seven pounds, 10 ounces. It's a natural finish. So what you're seeing is the actual color of the wood. It has koa body wings, a very nice dark koa there with a maple neck that is, once again, neck through designed, something that Gibson really doesn't do except for uh, Firebirds. Uh, it's got the rosewood fretboard and the cloud inlays, and once again, the uh, custom signature inlays on the first two frets there, dusty stone. It has a 24 and 5 8 inch scale length with 24 jumbo frets, with a 0.81 neck profile at the nut and a 0.96 up here at the 12th fret. It's got DiMarzio double cream humbuckers with once again full active electronics. Uh, I won't go over all that again because there's too much. And then it has the BC Rich quad bridge here as well as, you know, just chrome hardware everywhere. And it does have the Grover Imperial tuners. It has, you know, that different kind of shaped uh, tuning head and the uh, bullseyes on there. And that is on all sides of the guitar. So now that we got all the specs out of this, out of the way on this guitar, I figure that's the best way to, you know, talk about this alien guitar. Now let's take a look at the condition. This guitar, while custom ordered, it was definitely very well taken care of. Uh, as you can see here, you do have some very light uh, wear and tear from st string change scratches and whatnot, but nothing too bad on the uh, headstock here. Mainly just kind of in this area, you've got some very light scratching and light nicks and dings. 
The rosewood fretboard is nice and dark. It really, you know, kind of partners with the dark koa color very well. Got your jumbo frets and cloud inlays once again. Now onto the body. Uh, the body's pretty clean. I mean, obviously I'm touching this guitar, so you're going to see some light uh, fingerprints and light nicks and dings as we go over the guitar here. But overall, I mean, it is fairly clean, but you do have some light scratches and fingerprints. But definitely still collector's condition, I would say. I mean, it's just a bizarre guitar for me, but, you know, it's probably more normal, because, I mean, uh, back in the 80s, these things were cool. I think uh, Dave Mustaine is famous for using one of these back in the Metallica days. I guess Slash collects these. Things like that. It's definitely an interesting guitar. I thought it was going to be a lot heavier than this, honestly, but this is lighter than most Les Pauls. There is no serial number on this guitar, so that shows that it was custom made. Uh, no major nicks or dings to the back of the neck. You've got some figuring in it, some very light bird's eye and flame, but uh, nothing too extraordinary. But if you catch it at the right angle, kind of like this, you, you know, it is quite a beautiful piece of wood. The back of the guitar does have some very light wear. You can kind of see a scratch there, but it's not too, too bad. I mean, there's no giant chunks missing out of the guitar or anything that you would kind of expect. Uh, as far as chunks go, uh, you do have some, well, let's see, you've got some chipping to the back plates here. You can see that's kind of chipped away there. But the rest of that one is good. This one right here is kind of chipped. You can kind of see the crack. That's going to fall off very soon because you do have a small crack on the other side as well. And you are missing it on here as well. So overall, this is a you know, a collector's grade, custom ordered BC Rich bitch that it's pretty mind boggling to play. Once again, I'm not an expert on these. I did a bunch of research to give you the facts that I gave you. So I'm not sure how well I'm going to attempt to play this guitar, but hey, let's find out. This guitar does come with this super extra hyper heavy duty flight case. I mean, look how thick this thing is. It weighs, I would probably say 25, 30 pounds, maybe even more. So shipping this guitar will be fairly expensive. As you can see, it's got lots of wear and tear. I mean, the thing's kind of bulky to store. So I'm guessing, you know, it was gigged a little bit and stored a lot. And that's where most of these scratches come from. Uh, the latches on this thing are kind of interesting. I'm fairly new to uh, super heavy-duty flight cases like this, but I'll show you how it works for when you get it. All right, so this is how, how it looks like when it's latched. So what you got to do is kind of like a key. You turn it to the left, and then it folds down. So you just do that again here. And then to latch it, you just put it back up and turn it to the right and push it down. So very interesting. Definitely super heavy duty. I have no idea how this handle stays on and supports all this weight, but I'm guessing it's some sort of metal right there. And then you lift up open this heavy lid and it has locking latches kind of in the side that you can push to, you know, make sure that it doesn't fall on your beautiful guitar. And then you can see this interior. It is custom molded exactly for this guitar. I mean, there's tons of padding for the guitar. Definitely the perfect case for the guitar. We will be demoing through a Marshall JMP 1C 1 watt tube amplifier. All right, so here we are with the BC Rich Bitch, and uh, we're gonna be on the neck pickup. Uh, none of the fancy doodles on. pick up. Now we'll 
switch the switch here. Middle. Bridge. on the veritone. Pickups. We'll just show you what it's like when it's all on. Can control that with these two knobs. So let's we'll have them both halfway.
Alright, so that's the preamp stuff. Now we'll do like uh, the phase inversion. I guess that was actually all phase inverted accidentally. Now that's what this is without it. <laughs> Personally, I've never been able to hear the difference between phase inversion or not. I don't know, maybe I just don't have the ear for it. But the last thing we have here is coil tapping. Uh, so I hope that guy gives you guys an idea of how this guitar sounds. Once again, this was purely through the clean channel. That's just how crazy this thing is, can get. I don't even know how you would use this stuff with, you know, super gain, but I'm sure there's videos out there to show you. But I hope you enjoyed this. If you think you might be interested in owning this BC Rich bitch, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglies, T-R-O-G-O-Y-S. You can also check out the Reverb or eBay listings. And we'll catch you next time, Troglodytes. Bye.